Hello students, today we'll be learning about how to draw circuit diagrams. And here's what we want to be able to do by the end of this lecture. You should be able to represent electrical components properly using their standard electrical symbol. And we're going to learn the symbols for five basic components of an electrical circuit. A battery, a bulb, a wire, a resistor, and a switch. And we also want to be able to translate a circuit description into a proper circuit diagram. So that means if I give you uh, words or text that describes what a circuit is or does, can you draw a proper circuit diagram of that circuit or of a circuit that meets those requirements? That is what this second objective means. So let's take some notes. Uh, first of all, I want to define a circuit diagram. A circuit diagram is a standardized system of drawing electrical circuits so that things are wired properly. And by things, I really mean circuits. Circuits are wired properly. Standardized uh, means that we all agree on uh, a certain system. If uh, I develop electrical wirings here in Boston, or I develop electrical diagrams here in Boston, and somebody else needs to use that circuit, uh, over in Los Angeles, uh, they need to know that the way I've drawn the circuit is the same way that they would draw a circuit as well. Otherwise, they may not be able to build the right circuit. Okay, and you can see how this might be important uh, in areas such as, you know, building homes where we want to um, align the uh, electricity and electrical power in a, in a home to be able to go to the right places. If we screw that up, then people could get electrocuted, could be a safety issue. Uh, also for building devices, anything that uses electricity from computers to phones to anything else, we want to make sure that they are wired up properly so that they do what they're supposed to do and everybody's safe. Standard unit, a uh, standard system for drawing a circuit diagram is very important. So here are some rules for good circuit diagrams. Rule number one, use only straight vertical or straight horizontal lines. Okay, and a, a horizontal line uh, is something just straight across that's horizontal. If we have a vertical line, it's just straight up and down. And the reason we do that is that so we don't get um, confused if we have a bunch of wires going off in all sorts of different directions. Uh, it can be really easy to uh, lose track of what wires are connected to what. And we, uh, we don't want that. We want to make sure that we're able to wire our circuits consistently. Okay, another um, little bit of a note is that almost any device that converts or uses electrical energy can be represented by a resistor. Now we will talk about this term in a lot more detail later on in this unit. But for now, this is a good enough uh, definition for a resistor. Anything that converts or uses electrical energy, uh, which basically means taking energy out of the circuit, uh, is a resistor. Examples. Um, that could be, uh, let's say like a toaster. Toaster is a resistor. Uh, it's converting some of the electrical energy into uh, heat, so I can uh, make my toast. It's converting the energy to a different form, thermal energy, and it's also using elect electrical energy. It's taking some of the energy out of my circuit uh, in order to be able to make my toast. Um, I could say a cell phone is a kind of resistor. It's going to take the electrical energy that's in the battery, convert it into light uh, of the display, uh, it might convert it into other forms of radiant energy, the uh, electromagnetic waves that are transmitting the radio signals and the GPS signals. Um, so you could, you could represent a cell phone as a resistor. Basically, anything that can use electrical energy, that might use up energy that was in the battery, that was stored in the battery, uh, we can represent with a resistor. A special kind of resistor is a bulb. So a bulb is a resistor because a bulb is converting electrical energy into some other form. It's converting it into radiant and thermal energy, light and heat. And it does remove that electrical energy from the circuit. It sends it out uh, in the form of light waves and, and the heat that's radiated. Uh, but bulbs are used so often 
that uh, we actually give them their own special symbol. So even though they are a resistor, uh, they're a special resistor that deserves its own symbol because we're going to use it so often. Uh, remember that uh, this is from our last topic. Current always flows from positive to negative through a circuit. And what we just learned um, about uh, closed and open circuits in our previous topic, a circuit needs to be closed if it's going to function. So both positive and negative sides of the battery need to be connected to the circuit. And if that is not true, then our circuit is not going to do anything very useful because electricity will not be flowing. So right now you can fill out the left hand side uh, with some connections to previous topics or maybe examples that you can think of of the notes that we're currently taking. Uh, I'm going to move on uh, with the slides. If you need a little bit more time you know what to do. Just pause the video so that you can catch up uh, with taking your notes and making sure that you've annotated your notes and given yourself uh, good comments and connections on the left hand side. This is a table uh, that shows the uh, symbols for the common electrical components that uh, we said we were going to cover. So a wire is really easy, uh, we just draw it with lines. It could be uh, this is a straight horizontal line. I could also draw it as a straight vertical line. That's fine. Uh, some, some straight line that's going to connect two components together, uh, we're going to say that's a wire. A battery is a little bit more complicated, but not too much so. Notice that the positive side of my battery, I'm going to indicate with a longer uh, little crossbar there than the negative side. That way, if I uh, accidentally forget to leave the positive symbol off, then uh, I still know which side is positive. Okay, so this is a clarity uh, thing. We do it for clarity's sake. The positive side of the battery is represented with a slightly longer crossbar than the negative side. Third one down is a light bulb. Uh, you have a circle representing the bulb, uh, the glass bulb. And uh, inside we have a little squiggly, which represents the filament. Now you can draw this uh, in sort of a quick way. I like to draw uh, a few little swirlies like that, and then draw a circle around it. And uh, that's, that's my quick way of drawing a bulb. But if you'd really like to uh, draw this thing with a little swirly in the middle, uh, you can do so. Um, so that's a bulb. A switch. Also really easy. We um, we take a wire and we basically break it. Notice that we've created a gap in the circuit uh, with a switch. And that's actually basically all a switch does. A switch allows the, um, the circuit to become either open or closed. An open switch means an open circuit. Uh, in this case, how I've drawn it here is an open switch. And as we discussed when we talked about closed and open circuits, an open circuit means that no current is flowing. So an open switch actually means that that switch is off. Electricity cannot flow. Electrical current cannot flow. A closed switch means that there is a path for electricity to flow uh, through that from from one wire to the next and if electricity is flowing that's great it means that that switch is on okay a little bit confusing we usually tend to think of closed things as off it's kind of a negative word closed off and open is kind of like on but actually with electricity uh, it's the opposite and a way to remember that is to just think about what is actually happening to the current okay so we can actually make a connection over here connection is to closed and open circuits. Closed and open circuits. And I encourage you to look back in your notes and find uh, where we defined the difference between a closed and open circuit and think about what a switch is actually physically doing. Okay, a resistor, again, anything that converts or uses electrical energy, we can represent with a jagged squiggle. 
uh, just like that, just up and down, a zigzag, and uh, that can be a resistor. Now the best way to practice this is uh, just trying it out with some examples. So just try out this example number one. What I'd like you to do is pause the video, draw a circuit with one battery, two light bulbs and one switch. The switch is connected to the positive end of the battery. Uh, go back, make sure to follow all the rules uh, that we showed right here, rules for good circuit diagrams, and see if you can draw a circuit diagram that meets these requirements. Okay, let's see how you did. Now the thing to remember with uh, circuit diagrams is there are many right answers. There are actually many different ways to draw a circuit that meets these requirements. Um, some ways are better than others, more, more clear than others, but remember what we found out in our class activities is that it doesn't really matter um, which, how we orient or position the different components. The current uh, doesn't care. It's still going to do what it what it does. For example, if we turned a light bulb upside down, as long as it's still connected the same way uh, up to the battery, positive and negative, it's still going to light. Okay, so there's, there's, there's a few different ways we can do this. Here is one way to meet the requirements of this circuit. I'm going to draw my battery first. It's my power source, uh, my, my source of electrical energy in the circuit. I'm drawing uh, the positive side up in this case, so uh, there's my battery. I don't have to do that. I could just as legitimately draw my battery um, this way and put the positive side over here. That's perfectly fine. As long as you draw that symbol, you are representing that that is a battery in your circuit. Now it is important which side I connect to what, because we are specifically told that the switch is connected to the positive end of the battery. So I'm going to draw a switch right here connected to the positive end of the battery. Okay, there it is. And I still need to get in two light bulbs. So how about there's one light bulb and I'm going to make another light bulb over there. And I have to remember to connect it back to the negative end of the battery. Remember that a circuit needs to be closed. Uh, if we don't have a continuous conducting path from positive to negative, no electricity is going to flow. And in this case, current is going to go from positive to negative. If I wanted to label my current around this circuit, uh, there it is. This is one possible solution. Okay, I've used only horizontal and vertical lines. Current is flowing from positive to negative. I've got my proper diagrams on there, or proper symbols, and, uh, and it's fine. Another way I could have drawn this circuit. Here's my battery. Why not? I can draw it sideways. Uh, it doesn't actually matter. If we tilt the battery around, um, you know, it, it still performs its same function. And it's also important to remember that the diagram, the purpose of a circuit diagram is to show us what components are connected to what other components. As long as the connections are correct, it doesn't actually matter uh, how we draw uh, the orientation or the position of the different components. Okay, I know I have to have some switch connected to the positive end. There's a switch. It doesn't have to be at a right angle to the battery. It just needs to be connected to the positive side. Um, I also know that I need a bulb. Well, here's a bulb. And I need another bulb. There's my second bulb. Uh, so I've got all my required components, except I'm just missing one last step. I need to be able to connect my circuit to the negative side of the battery, too. It's really tempting to just draw a straight line that connects the bulbs to 
the battery and maybe this is how our circuit looks in real life maybe in real life when I look down at my table I have a battery right here then a switch two bulbs right in a row and then I just drag this wire back over to the to the negative end of the battery but remember we're not drawing what it looks like in real life we want to make a clear diagram that shows how these components are connected and if I want to do that I have to make nice straight horizontal and vertical lines I could draw the circuit this way okay and I will say that these two circuits this first one that I drew and the second one that that I drew will do the same thing they actually have the same function okay the orientation does not matter just the connections of one component to another in the right way is what's going to matter. So many possible right answers. As long as you have a battery, a switch connected to the positive end of the battery, and two bulbs, and you also meet all the requirements of our good circuit diagrams using uh, only straight vertical uh, or horizontal lines, current flowing from positive to negative in a closed circuit, both positive and negative sides of the battery connected, then, then you're fine. Okay, here's example number two. Once again, pause the video, see if you can draw a circuit that meets these requirements, and I will give you a solution in just a few moments. Okay, let's see how I did. And it looks like I need to correct some of my grammar. Two light bulbs and one resistor. So that should look a little bit better. So draw a circuit with one battery, two light bulbs, and one resistor. The two bulbs are on either side of the resistor. That's an important point. Well, I know I can always start with a battery. That's a pretty safe place to start because um, I know I'm going to need a power source. Uh, I have two light bulbs and one resistor. The two bulbs are on either side of the resistor. One easy way of drawing this circuit is, well, I know I need a bulb. I need a resistor and I need another bulb and those better be connected with straight horizontal and vertical lines in that order and um, and it needs to be connected to both the positive and negative sides of the battery so that is one possible answer to example number two I could draw um, many other solutions uh, to this problem uh, if I want, I could have my battery over here, here's a light bulb, there's a resistor, and there's a light bulb, and I come back right around to the negative side of the battery, that's totally fine. Again, it, these two do not look the same, but they will do exactly the same thing. Current leaves the battery, uh, current leaves the positive end of the battery, enters the first bulb, goes through a resistor, goes through a second bulb and returns back to the battery. That is the same thing that happens in the original circuit. Uh, other ways that I could draw this circuit. We don't always have to go clockwise. Let's say I draw my battery like so and then I want a bulb, a resistor, and another bulb and then I bring that all the way back around to uh, the negative end of my battery. In this case, we've moved the battery to the other side, but uh, once again, the same thing happens. I have a bulb connected to the positive side of the battery. Current's going to flow to that bulb, then this resistor, then back around to the negative end of the battery. Okay, This is a circuit diagram that also meets the requirements of example number two. So many possible right answers. I think you're ready for a challenge. Let's try example number three. Draw a circuit with two batteries and these batteries need to be configured so that we have twice the voltage. Whatever voltage I would have with one battery, I need two times that voltage in this circuit. Three bulbs and one switch and the switch should only be able to turn off two of the light bulbs, leaving the third one on. This 
is a challenge based on what we already know. But I think if you apply some logic, you will be able to figure it out. Pause the video now, give it a shot. It's okay if you uh, don't quite find the solution. I will post a solution in just a moment. Okay, let's see how you did. So, uh, I'm going to start off with my two batteries. And I know from uh, previous notes and reading that if I want to have twice the voltage, what I can do is put one battery on top of another battery. So I need to put this battery on top of the previous battery. So check it out. I now have two batteries connected to each other. Okay, this is going to give me twice the voltage. I had one battery and then I immediately connect another battery to it. You can imagine that one battery ends uh, right here at this red dot and then the next battery begins right above that dot. If that helps you visualize what I just drew, you could think about it that way, but uh, you don't have to. You can just draw um, one battery on top of another just like that. Okay, so let me draw in red uh, to see one possible solution to this problem. Um, it's really tempting, and a lot of times uh, we have, uh, I, I see this as a possible solution to this problem. We have one bulb, and we know the switch should only be able to turn off two of the light bulbs. So sometimes we'll see uh, a switch over here and then a bulb, and then another bulb. And the argument that students will make sometimes is that because the switch is here after the first bulb, it's only going to affect the two bulbs downstream of it. It's actually only going to turn off the other two bulbs, and because current is still going to flow through that first bulb, the first bulb is going to turn on and the other ones will not. And that is actually false. This is not a solution to this problem. And I think we can connect this to previous learning and think about why. If I break the circuit right here, and by break the circuit I mean I open the circuit. If I open that switch, then no current can flow through that switch. There's a gap right here. Because electricity cannot get from positive all the way back around to negative, the negative over here, then no current is going to flow. No current can flow unless there is a continuous conducting path from positive to negative. That was our previous topic. So this cannot be a solution even though it is very tempting. In order to solve this puzzle, we have to use a little bit of a trick. So here's my one battery. I have another battery immediately below it. Plus and plus. Okay. I want one light to stay on all the time. And I want a switch that's going to turn off two bulbs. I'm actually going to make another path right here and connect my bulbs like this. Now if I look at this um, scenario, it seems like I cheated a little bit, but what we did was we have a path from positive to negative through that first bulb that is not going to be affected by the switch. And notice there's actually another path over here that electricity could take from positive to negative through those other two bulbs. If I break the circuit right here, if I open the switch right there, what happens is there's a gap right here where no electricity can flow. That means that there's no path here through these bulbs. That path gets shut off and those, those bulbs are going to be off as well. And I'll still only have my first bulb on. That is a very tricky problem for where we're at, 
and it's okay if we don't fully understand why that works because we're going to focus on that a little bit more uh, later on in the unit. So this was a challenge, just a little bit of a logic puzzle for now um, to see if you can apply the same principles of circuit diagrams to solving something that's a little bit ahead of where we are. Okay, here's what I'd like you to do. Invent your own example. Use at least three components using at least one battery. I'd like you to describe your circuit in writing in your notebook and then draw a proper circuit diagram for that circuit. Okay, this will be, uh, uh, this should be in your notes uh, when we meet to discuss this lecture. Let's go back to our objectives. Our objectives were to be able to represent electrical components properly using their standard electrical symbol. The standard electrical sy symbols should be in your notes, wire, battery, light bulb, switch, and resistor. You should also be able to translate a circuit description into a proper circuit diagram. And for that objective, really I'm talking about the level of example one and example two. Uh, in both of these cases, uh, these circuit diagrams only have one loop of current, and that's really all we've talked about so far uh, in class. So that's all we're going to need for now. Later on in this unit, very soon, we're going to start talking about circuits that have multiple loops or multiple paths possible for the current to take. And, and you can see, even though that's a little bit more complex circuit, even though that's a more complex circuit, it still obeys the same rules of a circuit diagram as the more simple circuits. It still has battery symbols, switch symbols, uh, and bulb symbols. It still has horizontal, straight, uh, or vertical straight lines, and it still connects the positive end of a battery to a negative end of a battery. So a little bit more advanced, but again, all we need to uh, be sure that we understand right now is the level of example one and example two. Okay, I'll see you next time we meet.